Farshad, hi. Hi. Just come over to have a... I'm fine, yeah, I just wanted to see how you were doing. Yes, great. Is it running all right? It's running all right, yes. It's working great. Yeah. And how long, was, how long has it taken you to produce a sheet? Uh, about one half hour to two hours. Oh, it's yeah. tedious stuff yes. still, isn't it? Yeah. Very slowly, yeah. but it's great. Yeah. Well, what Farshad is doing is he's making um, a sheet of biodegradable polymer. Now, this is the sort of material that you use in dissolvable sutures. But the application of it's very interesting. We're using this to deliver cells to the eye. And the condition is uh, corneal scarring. So there's many, many patients across the world, especially in India, where there's um, acid, chemical burns, uh, genetic problems, immune problems, and you lose that clear window over the front of the eye. And instead, you grow scar tissue across. Now, that's very painful, and depending on the extent of the scar tissue, you lose a lot of vision, or you can be completely blind. And the interesting thing is, you can cure that reasonably well. Um, you can um, take cells from one eye, if the other eye is OK, culture up the cells in the lab, remove the scar tissue, and then put the cultured cells back on the eye. Now, the bit where we come in is we're trying to make a carrier for delivering those cells from the lab to the cornea. And we're making it out of a material that you use in dissolvable sutures so that the cells sit on this nice scaffold, which we'll show you in a minute, go onto the eye, and then the idea is the scaffold will just fade away, just like dissolvable sutures do, leaving the cells on the eye. So what Farshad is doing, and this is painstaking business, is he is spinning, spider-style, um, an electrospun scaffold. And this is very, very thin. It's about 150 microns. Yeah. He can show you in a sheet of this... Um, what it handles like. So it's a little bit like tissue paper. And the cells love attaching to this stuff. But we've deliberately made it out of polymers that fade away. They take up water and just dissolve away. So we want the cells to be happy on there for a little while, one, two weeks, and then we want the whole scaffold to just dissolve on the eye, leaving the cells in place. Now, the clinical problem that we're looking at here is scarring of the cornea. The context for this project is that scarring of the eye can happen across the world, but it's extremely common in India. In India right now, it's reckoned to be about 3% of the population are blind. And very often, the blindness is due to conditions that affect this layer of cells at the front of the eye. And you end up with eyes that look like these. And you can see through them either a little bit or not at all. So we are working with a very gifted group of ophthalmic surgeons in Hyderabad called LV Prasad. And they have been culturing limbal stem cells to treat scarring of the cornea for many years now with great success. But they deliver cells back to the eye using the human amniotic membrane. We in Sheffield, meanwhile, were developing easier ways of getting cells from the lab to the clinic. So we got together. And the clinical part of this research takes place entirely in India. The development of the carrier and the cell biology work is taking place by a partnership between my group in Sheffield and the group in India. And we're just coming up to the end of the first year, and that's working really well. Well, this is Amanda with one of our newest projects that started in the last year, and she's going to show us some of the data. I'll just explain the story, first of all. Cleft palate's very common, one in 2,000 live births. If this is just a problem of the soft tissue of the lip, this isn't a big problem. The surgeons can mend that. But where it's a real problem is where the problem also involves the hard palate. So if you put your tongue up against the top of your mouth, you've got bone there. Now, if that bone isn't in place, the surgeons have got a real problem. And the challenge is, what do you put there and when do you put it there? If you put bone-forming tissue there too early, the initial results look good, but then it distorts the whole of the jaw because as the child's head grows, the bone fuses and it distorts the mandible and you have to do more corrective surgery, etc. So the challenge really is to make a scaffold that will support soft tissue growth, which we can do very well, and bone, which is harder, and keep the two separate. So what we've been doing is we've been doing electrospun scaffolds, making different types of scaffolds, different diameters, and Amanda's got some of the results showing how we're doing on that, how well the cells are doing on the scaffolds, and how well we're achieving our aim of keeping the cells segregated. On the scaffold we have the green labelled cells which are on the top half and they are the fibroblasts which are the tissue forming cells. And as you can see on this image on the top side there's just green cells visible. If we then look at the bottom side which are the red labelled MSC cells we can see a clear field of view 
of the bone forming cells. If we look at a cross section we would expect to see both cells. If we do this we can see the red cells on the bottom and the green cells on the top. So we've achieved the first step in the project. We can make a scaffold where bone forming cells are happy on one side and soft tissue forming cells are happy on the next on the other side and we can keep the two cells segregated. So now we need to put them under mechanical conditioning and get the bone cells forming bone.